shame. It's Jesus, 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 Jesus. There's nothing else we need. There's nothing else we need. There's nothing else we need. It's all in one name. There's nothing else we need. There's nothing else we need. There's nothing else we need. It's in the name. before you, God. Hallelujah. Tonight with the celebration on our heart, God. Hallelujah. Because no challenge is too big, no obstacle too hard, God. No fight too hard, Father, to come against your name, God. So we lift your holy name. Hallelujah. We come tonight to lift your holy name, God. To lift, God, your name amongst your people, God. We want to be so saturated with you, God, that nothing about us is the same after tonight, God. We come looking for your touch. We come looking for your face. We come imploring you, God, to reinvent our lives all over again. Hallelujah. We make ourselves available unto you, God. We walk fearlessly, God, unto you, God. We settle ourselves, God because everything we need is in your name. Father, so we ask your blessings over this service, God. We ask your blessings over your manservant, God, as he brings the word, God. We ask right now, God, that it not fall on fallow ground, but that it increase in us, God, the way you designed it to increase, God. We ask that you burn off the chaff, God, pluck up the weeds, God, the things that are not like you, God. We destroy those even right now in the name of Jesus, God. And we pray a rear guard, God, around your man of God as he brings the word for these next three nights, God. No enemy in hell, God, will be able to come against him in the name of Jesus, God. We pray a hedge of protection around him now, God. Hallelujah. We dispatch your warring angels, God, to stand around him 360 degrees, God, so the enemy will have no access, God. Hallelujah. We stand declaring that only, God, what you prepare for us, God, will be able to access your presence, God. Thank you. So tonight, God, hallelujah. We expect your revival, God. We expect 
your anointing. We expect your touch, God. We expect to be challenged, God. We expect to be changed, God. We expect to be pushed forward, God. We expect to look new after this service, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for such a time as this. We thank you for everything that you have planned, God. We agree with you on tonight. Hallelujah. For whatever it is you would have in this service, God. Thank you for this time. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your glory that so fills this room. Hallelujah. We honor you tonight, God. It's in your precious son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good afternoon. If you can, could you read, um, open your Bibles up to Psalms 136. If you could stand for the reading of God's word. Psalms 30, 136. When you have it, can you please say amen? Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, his love endures forever. Whom by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. Who made the great lights, his love endures forever. The sun to govern the day, his love endures forever. The moon, the stars to govern the night, his love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn in Egypt, his love endures forever. And brought Israel out from among them, his love endures forever. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder, his love endures forever. And brought Israel through the midst of it, his love endures forever. But swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea, his love endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness, his love endures forever. To him who struck down great kings, his love endures forever. And killed mighty kings, his love endures forever. Shiloh, king of the, I'm sorry, Sihon, king of the Amorites, and his love endures forever. And Ah, king of Bashan, his love endures forever. And gave their land and his inheritance, his love endures forever. An inheritance to his servant Israel. His love endures forever. I have read to you Psalms 136 in its entirety. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. His love, his love endures forever. Hallelujah, Jesus. There are many reasons why we worship. There are many things that cause us to want to worship. For me, Psalm 3, it says, Lord, how they increase that trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me. And because of this, I worship. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God, Selah. And for this, I worship. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. And for that, I worship. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. And for this, I worship. I laid me down and slept. I awake for the Lord sustained me. And for this, I worship. I will not be afraid of 10,000 people that have set themselves against me round about. And for this, I worship. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbones. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. And for this, I worship. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. The blessings upon thy people, Selah. And for this, I worship. This is your call to worship.
Hallelujah. Arise, O oh Lord. Manifest your presence. Let your people be not ashamed. Hallelujah. Because you are good and your mercies endure forever. His mercies are new every morning and great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah.
Let your people not to shame. Let your people not to shame. You are good. You are good. And your mercy. And your mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you are good, Lord. His mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. He didn't have to do it, you know. He didn't have to wake you up this morning. Didn't have to close in your right mind. Didn't have to keep you. But he did. And since he did, I might as well go and give him the praise. Because he's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. It was King David that said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Hallelujah. <laughs> Worship is a choice. And today I choose to worship. Hallelujah, Lord. 
if we can sustain that worship for just a few more minutes. Come on, I wonder if you can lift your hands unto the Lord and tell him thank you. Come on, I need, I wonder if I got anybody in here that can declare, Lord, you are worthy of all of my worship, of all of my praise. You are worthy of all of my adoration. You are worthy, oh God. Hallelujah, you are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, with the fruit of your lips for about 30 seconds. Come on, no music with the fruit of your lips. Come on, just lift up a worship unto the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 God, we love you and we thank you and we honor you. And we bless your holy name. You are great. Hallelujah. You are great, oh God. You're worthy of our praise. Come on. Come on. Give me 10 more seconds. Come on. Give me 10 more seconds of worship. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you today, oh God. You are the great I am. You are the lover of my soul, the lifter of my head. And we worship you, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 You are worthy. Hallelujah. There's none like you, God. And so for that, we say thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Come on. There's another wave coming. There's another wave coming. There's another wave coming. I can sense it. There's another wave of worship. There's another wave coming. Oh, oh, God. We love you today, oh God. Haya, you're the robo shata. Haya, you're the robo shana, the lavasaya. We love you today, oh God. Ah. You today, oh God. <laughs> we love you today, oh God. Ah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. We want you to have your way tonight, God. We did not come for form or fashion, but we want you to have your way. We came for a divine encounter with you tonight. Oh God. We're expecting you, oh God, to destroy yokes. We're expecting you, oh God, to set the captives free. We're expecting, oh God, the more of you tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, put those blessed hands together and tell God thank you in this house. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. What a savior. And what a night. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Anybody ready for more? Anybody ready for the more of God? As a matter of fact, we you know what? We're not even going to do a whole lot of extra preliminaries tonight because the atmosphere is already set. And there's one here that's going to lead us higher into his presence. So let me just do what I have to do right now and then we'll move further. Amen? Because I want the man of God tonight to have all of the time that he needs. Amen? Amen. We are so elated that e- Apostle B. Dwayne Harden is here with us tonight. Amen. In the little big church. Amen. Amen. We thank God for what he is going to do. Amen. He is the pastor, apostle of the assembly in Atlanta. Um, I had the blessed privilege to meet him a couple of years ago in a conference that Prophetess Kava was doing. And he just so ministered into my life. And in this season of um, prophesies and and folk that do crazy stuff, it's just refreshing to meet a true man of God, a true prophet, a true apostle, and he is all of that. Amen? And so we are just elated that for the connection, we are elated that God has connected us, and we are elated that he is here with us. Now, one of my babies is here this afternoon. I'm so thankful. Stephanie Hall just means so much to me. I have watched her grow up. I have watched her become the woman of God that she has become. She she made a bold move. I can't even remember, I don't know how many years ago now, moved to Orlando, Florida, just she and her son. And I know that there were some that were scratching their head, you know, how you going to leave family? How you going to leave what you know and go down there to that big old place but God had purpose and destiny for her in Orlando and he saw fit to hook it up for her to be here in Mansfield on this first night amen of this shift and so I'm going to ask Stephanie to come and lead us we thank God for Dr. Walt Jordan as he comes in on tonight amen tremendous that's my brother in the Lord And he, of course, is very good friends with Apostle Harden. Thank God for for Robert Fleming coming in. If y'all ain't voted for Robert yet, you can vote for him. So I'm just excited about what God is doing. Can you just just look at your neighbor and say, this is your night to get whatever it is you need. Now, that person don't believe it. I need you to find somebody that's full of faith and tell them, this is your night to get what you need. Pastor Beth, I want you to come on down here. I want you to come on down front. I don't want you to be serving tonight. I feel like the Lord wants to minister some things to you, so I want you to take your pastoral position tonight. Amen. We thank God for Pastor Beth and for all who traveled down from Akron with her. Amen. Amen. Now, y'all stand to your feet and help me celebrate God for this gift in, in Elder Stephanie Dawn Hall. And after she finishes... The next voice you will hear will be that of our apostle, Apostle B. Dwayne Hart. Now, when he comes, y'all got to stand up again. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Stay there. Stay there. Glory to God. You know, I've gotten away from solos um, because I'm no longer interested in moving a crowd. Um, I've gotten away from things that are traditional and familiar because it's God's heart I want to move. So I have no clue what he wants to say, but I'm going to sing his heart tonight. Is that all right? to see you through come back to me I'm here for you I'm here for you to see Oh. 
somebody tonight. I don't know who you are, but come back to Jesus. He's here for you. Come on and lift your voice and thank God for being there for you. Come on and lift your voice and thank God for being there for you. Come on and lift your heart and thank God for being there for you. When your family wasn't there, when your closest friends that started with you wasn't there, he was there for you. Come on and bless his name. Father, Father, thank you for the day. Thank you that you never fail. I thank you, Lord, that everything, absolutely everything, works together for good. And so at the end of it all, we can still say it's all good. It's all good. So we bless you. We thank you that this shall be a eternal shift. Thank you, Lord, the next dimension we move into without intimidation. Despite turbulence, no intimidation, no fear. We bless you, Lord, for taking us there in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, somebody, y'all, that was a blessing. Y'all put your hands together and bless the Lord for. Amen. You may be seated. Let me just acknowledge uh, before I get going. Let me acknowledge. I got to acknowledge my brother here. 
uh, Pastor Walt, and I know she's done it already, but would y'all just thank God for my friend, my brother, Pastor Walt. Yeah. Amen. Um, I think he's doing a pretty good job. I was preaching somewhere. No, I, I got a phone call. Walt Jordan. Walt Jordan was here with us today. I said, oh, good. He, he, he just gave a testimony and told the church up. And um, But thank God for him. You can play while I'm, so I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, thank God for you, Stephanie. And um, wish the best for you. Uh, more, more is coming and, and a better, better situation is working out for you. God has favored you, but the situation is getting better and healthier for you. Amen. Would y'all uh, thank God for Pastor Collins. Yeah. That's your pastor, huh? She said, that's my pastor. That's our pastor. Amen. I want to go into the word. I guess some CDs and things, I can talk about them later on, maybe tomorrow, but because I, I don't remember everything I have. <laughs> and I got some t-shirts out there. Um, they call it Every Life Matters. Hashtag Every Life Matters. And, um, and then it say love everyone on the back. So you can catch some of that back there. Um, I don't know if the prices are on there. I just grabbed a box and took off. I usually get in trouble when I get home because I be mis mispriced and stuff. But, um, you know, we're going to be all right. Amen? Amen? All right. Thank you, sir. You're a blessing. Um, yes, he is. Um, and I'll, don't go too far. All right. Good. Um, open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 1. We got a couple days, so if you allow me, I want to build into something, okay? Y'all good with that? Now, I want you to look at me for a second. I want you to hear this. This ministry is headed for a shifting, and the shifting is taking place today, starting today. All right. So it's not like you're going to be looking futuristically into the future for something to happen, to transpire. It is transpired today uh, at this very moment. You have now entered into another place. Amen. Let me say it again. Today you have now entered into another place. All right. It's not the same as it was two hours ago. It's not the same as it was a day ago. Um, it's not something that you're going to have to pray for, you're here. So everybody just say it out of our mouth, we're here. we're here. Right, you're not going someplace, you're here. All right, heads up, here's what I need you to catch. God is not doing something. God never does something because he's already done everything. Everything with God is done. Everybody say it's done. Now there's a revelation behind this that if we get it, then we can understand that everything that that's why he never tells us. If you ever watch, God never says pray into the future. He said call is uh, he said he says, let's call those things that be not as though they are. OK, just as though they are you get they were. And in other words, you call it now because there is something blocking it from its nowness. Are you following me? So your words are creative like God's words, and you have to act like God. Now, this is crazy talk right now, but y'all just flow with me. You've got to act like God because that's the only way you get God's stuff. If you ever notice, everything God tells us to do is just like him. And we're made in his image and in his likeness. So in his image and in his likeness, he's always commanding us to do like him. Right? Am I making sense? So if you want something, you don't, you don't got to beg for it. You call it into being. You speak. Uh, if you want a mountain move, speak to the mountain and tell it to be removed. So when God wanted the, uh, dry ground, he said, dry ground, come forth. When he wanted water split, he just said, water, you go this way and that way. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. He began to speak to the thing and tell it what to do. And oftentimes what we do is speak to God and try to get God to do something that he's already done. So our role becomes to step, step in that place and be like God and begin to command peace and command things here and so forth and so on. You understanding what I mean? 
Now, the Bible says, let this mind be in you, what? Which was also in Christ Jesus. Okay, now that's the part we normally stop at, but there's a comma. It's not a period. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, comma, who being in the form of God, comma, thought. What did he think? How did he think? That's the part that we got to focus on, how he thought. Because if we don't think like he thinks, we don't have ways like he has. So now you can challenge me in this because you say, well, our thoughts are not his thoughts and neither are we his ways. But you got to read the Bible in context and you got to read it completely because when you do that, you will find that he was saying, return unto me. Return unto me. Now, when you return unto me, you return unto my thoughts. You get it? Which means you can now think like he thinks. The problem is we don't think like he thinks, so we don't have ways like he has. So things don't work out. And what he was saying, as high as the heavens are from the earth and so forth, what he was saying, that's how far your thoughts are from me. So, and when he says this, now follow the principle, uh, how can two walk together except what? They be agreed. So if you are as high as the heaven there from the earth, that's how my thoughts are. If you down here and his thoughts are here, then we're not walking together and we're not in agreement. Now guess who ain't leaving they post? So God's not leaving his post and he'll wait there until you come up to his thinking where you agree with him, and once we come into agreement, then you can see some things manifesting. Make sense? So now, what was his thoughts? Uh, Let his mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, just like you and I, thought. What did he think? It's not robbery to be equal with God. As a man thinks, wait a minute, as a man thinks, then it says, in his heart, he is. Now, watch this. A man can think a thing, and it might not be the right thing, but if it gets in his heart, he is it. Because from, uh, now watch the principle. God wants something, he speaks to it. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we have heart and thought coming into conjunction, come coming together. Y'all with me? And when they come together, action takes place. So if a person thinks the sky is yellow and it gets in their heart, they go talk it and it's going to manifest in their eyes and it's going to be yellow. Even though it ain't yellow. Wow. Wow. That's why the word has to be so evident in you that you begin to say what God says and think how God thinks. Then you'll begin to get things that God gets. Y'all following this? Watch this. The disciples are out in the boat with Jesus. Jesus is in the bottom of the boat. This is a very interesting boat. I don't know many boats with a bottom. However, we go go with the word. He's at the bottom of the boat. Most yachts have a bottom. Anyhow, um, so which means they weren't poor and they weren't scrambling around get, trying to change, get up a little change. Y'all understand what I mean? And the boat was so plush till he was asleep while a storm was going on. Can we get a better picture? All right. So here he is. He's in the bottom of the boat, sleep. Now, while they are up there, they're saying, we're perishing. Right. He's resting. Right. Perishing, right. resting. Right. Same boat. Yeah. Same Savior. Right. The week before when he got him out of another mess. Right. Same situation. Right. He's sleep. they perishing. they they saying, Must, we about to die. Okay? Their thinking has them going towards death. Yeah, yeah. Jesus is thinking Whoa. keeps him asleep and resting. Wow. 
So now we go from this next dimension. They go and wake Jesus up. Jesus wipes the crust out of his eyes, if you will. He gets up, come up to the top now. Y'all here? He comes up the stairs. Y'all got to say something to me every so often. I know I'm saying some stuff that might just be flipping your brain, but just work with me. Just say amen every now and then. It's good for my ego. All right? All right. So he comes up to the top of the boat. Watch this. And they, and he, he, looks at, he looks at the situation. They are panicking because they're going by their thoughts. We go die. Jesus is saying, you're messing up my rest. Two different scenarios. You got my rest right now. And, and they're saying, we about to die. Jesus is saying, y'all done woke me up. All right? Now watch this. And then he goes, he looks at the wind. He says, peace. Then the water keeps moving, so he says, be still. And now everything smooths out. Then he looks at him and says, O ye of little faith. Very interesting. Because, you know, uh, they would say, why you call me one of little faith? We came to you. When they could have done it themselves. Am I making sense? Yeah. So changing your thoughts, it changes the atmosphere. It changes the environment. Are y'all with me? I think I was, every time I think of Mansfield, one person comes to mind, one person comes to mind initially. Bishop Walter Jordan. Bishop Walter Jordan. And then his beautiful wife just comes and appears in my face and all of this, and then everything attached to my experiences as a kid at Greater St. John Church of God in Christ. All right? Are y'all with me? That's Mansfield for me. For some people, Mansfield is the prison. Am I making sense? So my experience about Mansfield is good, while others call it a prison. My experience is worship and the annual work, the musical and the stuff that we did all those years and my opportunity to come and play on the drums. You understand what I mean? Those, that's what it comes to my mind. Mansfield has good thoughts for me. But for others, it's a job as a CO. So every time I think of Mansfield, I think renaissance revival and other people think what is Mansfield what is Mansfield that you're mindful of Mansfield y'all following what I'm saying in other words so when I come I don't have the picture of defeat for the area so I I'm troubled when y'all don't take authority over the area and take ownership of it. Am I making sense? Because uh, many times God will take a place of insignificance, put people with a good mouth in it. From the abundance of the heart, they got a good mouth. And once they begin to speak, they begin to speak life and to situations, and to a dead situation. Yeah. Now, unless a grain of wheat, I, I preach in principle form, okay? So, see, I'll stick with me. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and die, it abideth alone. So, if you get the right person speaking to the death, it's like watering a plant and watching it grow. Are you here? So when God begins to do different things and open certain doors, he's not doing it just to call it an end and a final. Y'all know what bothers me? Um, uh, I, I get tired of preachers got a vision, and their only vision is to build a building. That's our vision. 
and they put a picture up on the wall. That's the vision. <laughs> Twelve people, and the vision is thousand seats. Yeah, they got 12 people, 1,000 seats on the picture. And, and I, I, you know, I'm like, are you really driven by a piece of mortar? Mortar. But that seems to give them some kind of power, some kind of something. And, and, and when I think of, when I get, when I think of things like that vision, I think people. I look at people. And God told me before, he said, build people. People will build a building. Because don't nobody want to live in a, a bad house. So you build up their mindset. They go build, they go build the other stuff. So my dream ain't the building. That is called taking territory. Am I making sense? But I can't have territory until I have the right minds around me. The right thinkers. Are y'all following this? You got to have good thinkers with you. People who ain't afraid to think with you. To go into realms of thought that says, we can take over this place. The reason why the church don't function together, pastors don't come together, is because we don't think. We, we refuse to think together. Well, you won't see many pastors coming into a thinking meeting. <laughs> just come together to think. Let's just talk. Let's just talk. Let's, what did Paul mean when he said this? Let's, let's stretch the thought. You have one person who's a theologian and refused to move from cemetery thought. I did mean seminary thought. And they, so they don't want to move from it, so they discount revelation and right, new thought. Right, yeah, yeah. Then we say there is no new thought. Wait a minute. It's new thought to us because we haven't accessed it before. Right, right. Church people, we call it revelation. Right. The world calls it new thought. Uh-huh. Y'all hear? Yeah. Revelation is not something that's new. It's something that always was. You just hadn't seen it yet. So it just moves a veil from your eyes and you say, whoa, it's so new to you because you ain't seen it yet, but it's already been there the entire time. So preachers have a hard time because I I was, you know, listening to a young guy today and I was praying for him because, you know, he's, he's, he's just young in this thing. And so he's very solid on his condemnatory message is, it's, he don't mean to be, but, you know, he's, he's, uh, uh, and, and he's critical of where he come from. Criticism of your past will always hinder your present. You got to know how to handle where you come from, put it into perspective so you can have a victorious present. Am I making sense? I'm a preacher's kid, and I'm a preacher's kid, and I got tired of all the hypocrisy I saw. So then I became a fighter against it and became it. Can we be honest today? You get in there and you, it might not be the same. You might not be a, 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 a gossiper, but, well, you might not be a, pro, a, a fornicator or a adulterer, but you just, just as much as criticizer and just as mean and uh, accusational. You follow me? You become, what if you're not careful to understand your past, you become your past. Just in a different form. Am I making sense? So here it is. I, I, let me just kind of hurry this up along. A lot of preachers and a lot of us, we never come together to think. Everything is so dictatorial. We dictate. We're tyrants. This is how it's going to be. You coming against my authority? And it's dangerous to come against the authority. But 
how many authorities are making room for thought? Creative thinking. Next dimension can't happen unless next dimension thought begins to happen. Make sense? Yes. All right, so let's go into scripture. Ephesians chapter, uh, chapter, uh, I said chapter one, but let's go to chapter three. I'm trying to stay focused. Uh, Reverend Jordan, pray that I stay focused. Three, verse 14, for this reason, now let me set the stage here. Look at me, heads up. Paul said, in the <laughs> Paul said, uh, these were Paul prayers. We call them Pauline prayers. They're prayers that Paul prayed, all right? And so for, for a couple years, I was word of faith. I, I was Kojic. I was word of faith. I was everything chasing after God. Come to find out God wasn't hiding from me. Y'all hear? So, so, you know, I was all, I was tossing my, my, I, I, uh, I ate and slept Tulsa. Y'all understand? So it was Jesus, Aura Roberts, and, and Kenneth Hagin. Now, ain't nothing wrong with them, but my focus was I'm chasing something. And because I was chasing, I was probably missing God because God wasn't hiding. So I'm running, looking for God, and God is like, hey, right. hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Are y'all here? But, however, I did learn in the process, and this is one of the things I learned. We need to pray these scriptures. So this is how I would pray this scripture. Y'all ready? Yeah. Verse, starting at verse, it's really uh, about... Verse 16, and I would pray, God grant me, according to the riches of your glory, to be strengthened with might through my inner, through your spirit in my inner man, that you, Christ, may dwell in my heart through faith, that you, God, being rooted and grounded, that I, being rooted and grounded in love, will be able to comprehend with all the saints. Now, this is the verse I want to work on for just a little bit, that I may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, everybody say width, width. length. Depth, Depth and height. And height. Now, uh, and, and then we'll read the rest and then I'll come back to it. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that I may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto you, God, who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or think according to the power the, that worketh within me. To you be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now I needed to finish that because I was praying and I, it's a habit and so I didn't want to miss the opportunity. But back to the verse 18 may be that we may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width. Everybody say with. With. That's how wide a thing is. The, 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 the next one is what? The length. That's the how long. And, and the depth, right? The depth, how deep, and the Okay, now the church, we often are always going to another level. We're always going to another level. But we don't understand the mind of God because God does not speak in levels. He speaks in dimensions. Right. And those dimensions encompass everything. The depth, the height, the width, the width, the length. Yeah. Y'all following this? Yeah. So what God does is he gives us a little bit of something and then he says, work the little. Uh, mm. yeah. So expansion okay. can come to the little. That's good. Am I making sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, in terms of little, let's look at, uh, let me give you an example, and I want you to catch this. Now, the Garden of Eden, everybody say Eden. Eden. Now, the Garden of Eden was a little plot of land that God gave to Adam and Eve. Okay. However, he gave them the entire earth. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. But to start, he gave them the garden. Okay, so he gave them a start. Now, I can prove my point because when he messed up, 
he was not kicked out of the earth. He was kicked out of the garden. And he still had dominion, but it was an unfinished garden. It was unfinished. And the Garden of Eden was supposed to expand into the thorns and thistles. Okay. Y'all get this? Yeah. Let, me, let me say it this way. <clears throat> See, when God kicked them out of the garden, come on, y'all. When God kicked them out of the garden, he put them outside of the garden right. where there was unfinished business. All right, right, right. Okay, okay. Yeah. You follow me? Yeah. So they are now... Outside of the garden, unfinished business. It's like having landscaped land uh -huh. and then land that's unlandscaped. Right. Now, you can walk landscaped property, but unlandscaped property, you don't know what you're walking into. Right. It's got poison ivy, which you probably intentionally got out of the place where it's landscaped. It's got other stuff, thorns, that aren't set to the side so you don't know they're roses because the rose petals don't come up as nicely and you end up getting cut by thorns and thistles. You follow me? But in the landscaped area, everybody say the landscaped area, the area of prettiness, if you will, you can see your way through. What God did was take Adam out of it because it had too much life in it. Life to, su to support his new death. <clears throat> Am I making sense? Yeah. See, Adam had eaten himself into death. <laughs> and had he been in the garden, the food from the garden would have kept his death alive. Thank you. Are, are y'all here? So he had to take him out of the place of being fed his death to being fed and put him in a place to where he was allowed to die so he can resurrect. Wow. 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 So first Adam died. Second Adam. Am I making sense? I know I'm giving y'all some crazy. These are my thoughts. Can y'all handle some more? If you can't, I'll squall. No, I won't. I really won't. <laughs> So here we go. He's, he, he's, he's taken Adam out of the place where he was intent, intended to expand. Uh -huh. Am I making sense? Right. So here's what happened. Like I remember we, uh, when I was coming up, we had property that the, in the property we would cut the grass. And then, you know, my father was a slickster, so he'd just go cut some more because he didn't like the way the neighbors kept their yard. Right. Y'all follow what I'm saying? It just didn't look good. So what he would do is he'd cut a little thread more, and then before he knew it, he was in their yard. So what he just kept on doing, one day he just said, I might as well cut their yard too, because they don't cut their yard, and it was making our yard look bad, right? So what was happening is expansion was taking place. Y'all follow? So it's like there's this strip right here. Thorns and thistles are right here. Beautiful garden is right here. Yeah. So God is saying, the more you trust me, the more we expand. Right. And every time you expand in width, you expand in depth. Right. And you expand in height. And in length. You following me? In real estate, everything that you own in one piece of property goes up as high and down as far as it can go down. Are you getting this? So that is uh, height, depth, width, and length. So God wants to expand us beyond our simple borders. He wants to take us beyond. And what we think is expansion and growth and maturity is not really at all what it really is. See, we think money is a blessing. Money ain't necessarily a blessing. If I gave all y'all $500 million in here right now, you would feed your habits. 
the things you're praying for deliverance from, you would finance them. So it can't be that money is a blessing. A right mind is a blessing. Are you following this? Your mind will give you focus and then your money ain't nothing but a blessing at that point because you take money to finance what's on your mind. Let's talk. If I told you, if I gave every one of you in here a million dollars, most of you would be broke within six months. You know why? Because you go buy your mama a house. You'll be giving, paying the bills for Pookie. Right. You'll be out, you know, your sh- your kids who couldn't wear Jordans before, you'll be buying them Jordans every day. Right. And you'll be, you know, uh, you've been done fixed up your house in the projects. Um, <laughs> bought new furniture instead of buying land. Right. See, we don't think. See, you get some money, buy some land. Right. Not no furniture by the land and then trust God later. But since we don't think generationally, we think selfishly, we got to get what we need for us right now and not think for the long run for generational blessings where I can leave a blessing to my children's children. Am I making sense? We don't think dimensionally. We just keep thinking selfishly. We stay locked up in our box in our one place. All right, now here's the bottom line to most of what I'm saying right now is that God has come to shift the entire region here, but he has also come to shift this ministry into another place. Now you got to come with me because the fight that you once had is ended today. Okay, the fight. (laughs) In, In fact, it wasn't, it's not even... It wasn't even a permissible fight. It was just a fight. It was a systemic fight. It was a fight that says we just can't let her have it that easy. We just go fight the system. We go fight God because we are the system. And we go, you know, if she made of what she really made of, then we'll see if she go last. Okay. Today that comes to an end because, and I don't know, she hasn't told me anything like this, so y'all gotta just, just trust that I'm there. Okay? Because here's the deal: there are things that God says. Now today you have permission to shift people and things. Okay? You, all the political movements that you were doing before, all the being political and being nice and saying, I'm going to be patient. God says, no, that's only taking you to levels that's going to limit you. I'm ready to shift you dimensionally, and the wrong people will eat fruit that will bring death, which will put you in the thorns and thistles with them. So he says, today, that ends. That ends. Somebody say it, that ends. And and see, if you catch this, this is a revelation not just for the church and Pastor Colin. This is a revelation for your own life too. You need to come to this place where you stop and you say, I ain't trying to put up no front no more. That stuff, that mess just ends today. However you want to say it, you just say that blank ends today. Okay? And keep your minds pure, saints. Keep your mind pure. <laughs> you need to preach to yourself right now and start prophesying and saying it. And whatever, whatever your situation is, you got to say, it ends right now. Right now. Because, see, what happens is you begin to question who you are when you are constantly submitted to something that ain't supposed to be in place. You can't submit when you're the authority. You can't submit to a lesser value. Wow. Wow. Great. Are you 
y'all hearing this? I like deacons. I do. I like, you know, I like all that. But you're not going to tell me what to do. You, You can't see with the eyes, the lenses that God gave me to take you someplace. How you think you're going to lead me and I'm the leader? Followers don't lead. And leaders should not follow. Am I making sense? Now, it it sounds like I'm putting all the attention on her, but if you can get a revelation, this will free you. Because uh, there are, for example, I go to a lot of places. I'm at a lot of churches, and I travel quite a bit. Um, I depend upon people. Now, I got two assistants, two that help me stay on track. They do their best. All right? They do. Sometimes I get lost and they can't keep up with me, but they do their best. They talk for me. They say, you know, don't be, you know, oh, he'll, he, we got him. And they try to fix it up, right? But here's the deal. When I get my paperwork, I'll say, where am I going? Okay, I'm on my way to Mansfield. Good. All right. In the paperwork is included stuff like who's picking him up. Right. Well, uh, Brother Doolittle uh-huh. is going to pick you up. Uh-huh. Brother Doolittle, who does nothing but stand in the back, watch the cars, and pick up folk. Y'all hear? That's Brother Doolittle. Right? But watch this. Brother Doolittle, y'all better leave him alone. Watch this. Watch this. Come, come, come. Come here. Brother Doolittle knows everything I need in order to get me where I'm supposed to go. If I get in the car and he picks me up at the airport and he grabs my bags, we look down on that, right? He grabs my bags and put them in the car. My first thought is, I don't know where I'm going, so I have to depend or follow him. Now, if I'm arrogant, I come in and say, I'm the man of God. I'm going to walk in front of y'all. So now he's trying to lead me from behind. Now, my arrogance kicks in because I don't want nobody from behind talking to me. So now we all confused when Brother Doolittle was now the leader because every one of us have our leadership moment. We need to know how to stay in our place and let the one that's supposed to do their place do their thing. God's moving some folk. And they ain't going to leave. And the two that do leave were supposed to leave. And when you check their financial record, they were supposed to leave. I know this sounds arrogant, but where your heart, your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So if you telling me a whole bunch of stuff and you ain't giving to it, that shows your level of submission. Submission. What is submission? Submission, the word submission is two words. Sub, under, mission, right? It just simply means go under the mission. When you go under the mission, your fight ain't against the mission. It is supportive of the mission. Am I making sense? That's why, ladies, if you marry a man just so that you can have some good... And he has no mission, you're about to be miserable.
you need to you need to interview and say, what is your mission? What what is your mission? And and if you got the mission, let me see if I fit in your mission. Because if I gotta be quiet, I wanna be able to be quiet supporting something. Can I can I be your little raw tonight? Just can I talk a little bit straight? Watch this. I was praying one day. I was talking to a young lady, and she was talking about I like him to be a little rough neck, right? And I told her I said, okay, that's fine. I say, but if he ain't got nothing, what's the rough neck gonna do? It's gonna break your neck. You gonna be broke. And if you got any kind of consciousness, watch this, any kind of consciousness. Y'all listening to me? Yeah. If y'all, if he got any kind of consciousness, what's, what's going to happen? What's going to happen is she going to wake up. Right. She going to wake up along the way and find out, watch this, hear me. Y'all ready for this? Yeah. The moments that she had with his roughneck, he probably needs some Viagra by now. And the roughneck ministry ain't gonna work. Are y'all listening to me? Now you're miserable. Okay, because now you got your family talking about you. Right? Because they said this was the stupidest thing she could have ever done. Or the stupidest thing he could have ever done. And watch this, all of that. So you know what I told the young lady in council? She told me, she said, I, well, I, you know, I like a little ghetto in him. I said, well, why don't you tell him what you like? Tell him, to, tell him to shake you up every so often. But make sure he got some sense. Right, right, right. Are y'all listening to me? Make sure he know how to work. Make sure he got a mission. Because the little shaking up, you get thrown up against the wall, it's, it's going to turn into something crazy. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Just tell him, say, hey, every so often, can you just talk rough? <laughs> Train him, you know, to put on a movie and tell him, act like him. But because after all that's over, you're going to want some stability. You're going to want some vision. You're going to want some life. And it don't make not a drop of sense. To be caught up with somebody stupid ain't going nowhere. Is this making sense? I know it don't sound like our typical Pentecostal, you know, church messages, but I need y'all to understand, next dimensional living don't require a huh. Next dimensional living requires that you have understanding of where you are and how to expand. We can't preach like we used to. Before, we'd tell a homosexual, get out. Yeah. You do it now, they come and sue you for your building. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You got to think next dimensional right now. Right. That don't mean you got to compromise. Right. Right. Before, we used to be evil. Right. Now we're finding out evil don't win nothing. Right. Why did we think that we could be evil at, towards a homosexual, but then love a prostitute? We're going to love the prostitute and hate a homosexual. Right. Right. They didn't get there on their own. Something happened in the transition of life. Are you following this? Just like a prostitute didn't wake up and she was three years old, called to be a prostitute. How is it that we can't figure out how to love people to life? How come we can't figure out how to embrace? You know, when I was coming up, I thought, honestly, I thought, honestly, I thought if I hugged the homosexual, it go get on me, and ding, I was going to be gone. But that ain't what happened. It don't happen that way. Are y'all listening to me? You got to learn. You got to learn how to love people. 
When I found out that a simple hug can change a whole man's life, Next dimensional living. Yes. Next dimensional operation. Yes. You got people outside crying for a move of God. Yes. Most, most times I found out that the people that we kicked out of the church, right. it was the mothers or somebody up front who had a Jezebel spirit that really needed to be kicked out. I really don't want to do this, but I'm going to give it just a few minutes, all right? Y'all take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. This Jezebel spirit is not a whore. It's not a physical whore. This Jezebel spirit hides itself behind religion. This Jezebel spirit calls itself a prophetess. It labels itself. And then it teaches and seduces the people into sexual immorality. Right. It's not talking about physical sexual immorality. Yeah. It's talking about mental sexual immorality. That's why you can have a church with two pastors. I'll explain the two pastors. You say do something and everybody watch Jezebel to see if it's okay. Are y'all listening to me? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I'm not talking about a pastor put in place. I'm not talking about a pastor that the pastor has ordained. I'm talking about somebody who labeled themselves and refuses to come up under that mission. Normally they find you find these people in the intercession team. Because these people looking for a title so they say they're willing to pray. They're willing to pray and then they get people around them to pray with them, which becomes their congregation. And they start influencing them prophetically. I got a word for you. Are y'all listening to me? I shut down at, at, at the embassy back home. I shut down prophesying. And now I, I love prophecy. I prophesy. But all these people running to me trying to connect with me because they think they just go have a prophecy fest. No, you immature. You have no character. You broke. You ain't trying to fix your life. You ain't trying to do nothing. And you want to prophesy to people? Oh, no. No, you're not prophesying to folk. And you can't even, let me look at your life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. These secret intercession meetings turn into critical meetings. And they begin to criticize the leader based upon what direction they think the leader should go. Pastor Rob. Uh, Pastor Walt, you know, he's just kind of, it's, it's, I'm praying for him because I seen something the other day. What did you see? And let me tell y'all, if you entertain the conversation, you are as much a part of it. Are y'all listening? Yes. So we grow. Watch me. Please hear this. We grow in mature churches because we tolerate the folly. We tolerate the frivolous activity. We tolerate their silliness. And the Bible said in Revelation chapter 2, he says, I got something against you. What? You allow, permit, you tolerate, you put up with this spirit. Y'all are loving people. Y'all are wonderful people. Y'all's work is better the second time than it was the first time and you do good the first time. But I got a, and then he says I got a few things but he only named one thing. Got a few things. You tolerate the spirit Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. Alright? Now the spirit is not 
gender, uh, it has no gender. But I'm going to tell you something. Most of the times, when a man got a Jezebel spirit, he act like a woman. He start gossiping. That don't mean he out sleeping with another, you know what I'm saying? Don't nobody be sleep, but y'all understand. Um, Y'all with me? And, 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 and he began to take on little woman-like features. Uh -huh. yeah. Dudes, watch this. Dudes, we, uh, most of our conversation is, yeah, man, LeBron, you know, Steph, Steph is, he'll shoot your lights out. And, and, or we'll ride down the street, listen to music. And we can ride down the street for 20 miles and don't say nothing. Right, just, right, right, right. <laughs> that's hot, man. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Women, y'all ride down the street. Y'all can't not talk. Y'all think the other one got an attitude with you or something. It's, it's just, that's women. Now, that's, that's, that's the difference. Okay? But when you got a man who will ride down the street and he got something to say every, every one mile. <laughs> Am I making sense? It's just, it's just not sensible to me to ride down the street and be talking about folk to another dude right. for no hoe. Right. I'll be looking at him like, I'm going to get in my car because I don't know where you're going to try to take me. That's too much. It's too much. So back to it, that, 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 that spirit has different attributes. And it loves a woman because of her ability to seduce. Her seduction isn't aggressive. Y'all following this? A man, Teddy Pendergrass taught us what a man, turn him off, right? But um, um, you all right over there? She think I'm crazy. Anyhow, that you know, and and but but a woman, a woman will light a candle and cut the light on, right. and then cut the light off, and before you know it, you under the influence wow. of a fine, hopefully fine woman. <laughs> Y'all hear? Yeah. A woman don't just aggressively come in and, right? Huh. Right. right? So Jezebel don't want to be seen. Jezebel rules the kingdom from the queen's chair. That's illegal. Because if there's a king, her chair is only there to assist him. But when she can tell him what to do and he do it, then something's wrong. That's an Ahab spirit. And when that Ahab spirit comes, it produces weakness, right. which means that which is supposed to be under is now over. Wow. 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 Something's wrong with that. See, you can't expand. See, just, just start playing with me or else I keep on going and I don't want to do that. Just So just play in the spirit like you really annoying it like Benny Hinn or some stuff like that. <laughs> you know, in the spirit. All strings. And, you got me. You can play a little piano for a minute, all right? And um, so so when we, when we really get going, when we really get going into next dimensional movement, we have to look at a few things. And we got to identify them and say we're headed towards expansion but not get influenced by them. Oh, okay. Am I making sense? Yeah. So we got, we want to take this land over. We want to go further. So you got to be careful that you don't lose your seat as you work to expand. Watch me. Adam shouldn't have ate the fruit. Regardless to whether or not Eve did or not, he shouldn't have. 
because it was his blood, not her womb. Am I making sense? That was going to destroy or embrace the fruits, elements. She could eat it all day and it'll go right out. But for him, it went into his DNA. And every other person was locked up in his DNA. So when he ate it, we ate it. Had he stayed in position, she would not have been able to tell him to eat it. And he eat it. Am I making sense? So he ate it. He went, the man, let me say this way, the authority went under her. And all of a sudden, everything goes crazy. Submit it to the wrong position will cause you to miss all the blessings. And it's a sad thing to be blessed to have what you have and it's time for expansion and you end up eating the wrong fruit. Basically, eat, listening to the wrong person. Am I making sense? Today in the church, uh, different things constitute that fruit. Somebody will give you a new position. I'm going to make you this. And you eat the fruit. No character on your life, but you got a position. They only put you there because they didn't want to lose you. And they don't mind playing the game because they don't have no character either. Character looks for character. Folly don't mind folly. Am I making sense? So, 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 here we are. Kingdom grace, right? Kingdom grace is moving into a new place. That's where we are today. We'll, we'll do some more stuff tomorrow and Tuesday. But kingdom grace is moving into another dimension. Say it. That's what all of this is about today. A new dimension going to another place now every time I think about that I'm also associating myself to new atmospheres which means you have to gain atmosphere control am I making sense every great man I've ever known knew how to control the atmosphere every one of them they control the atmosphere. Take it down just a little bit. They control the atmosphere. Are y'all here? You say, how can a man control God's atmosphere? Unless there is a man to interpret the atmosphere, you don't know how God is showing up in the atmosphere. Are you catching this? And when I say man, I'm not talking gender specific. Y'all following this? Y'all familiar, some of y'all familiar with Bishop William Morgan James? Small little midget of a man, little hands. But that man would take a congregation and everybody's heads are down. And he'd do this little old thing. And all of a sudden the room will explode in worship. He ain't said nothing, just... Walk, Bishop Walter Jordan come in and do this here. Put everybody in check. Rubbing hand, just rub his hand. Garland, get on the keyboard. The atmosphere becomes conducive to what he wants to deliver. Every great man knows how to control their atmosphere. Because, watch this, write this down. He who controls the atmosphere controls the minds of the people in the atmosphere which means this God trusts leaders with atmosphere control 
if you don't know God, you won't know how to control the atmosphere and take the people to another place. Am I making sense? See, we often want to eliminate the man of God or the woman of God and say it's just me and God. But if that were the case, you can go to your house and there will be a relationship with God that was so plain the atmosphere would always be conducive. No, somebody's got to bring the conduciveness of God into that place. The atmosphere has to be set for another place. Am I making sense? You can't, <clears throat> I don't care what nobody say. Benny Hinn taught us a lot of lessons. Y'all watch Benny Hinn. Them Benny Hinn sang them old songs, all that stuff, but he do it systemically. And the atmosphere, that organ get to playing and it don't sound good, it ain't a hammer. No, but whatever the case may be, you are, it, what happens is people don't know that they're listening to songs that are recycled because they're looking for a healing. So the energy goes towards healing. So he controls the atmosphere by offering you healing. He says, God is going to heal you. And when he does that, you get on one accord with the healing. I need y'all to hear me. This is not illegal. I need y'all to follow this. So he says, meet me at such and such Coliseum because there's going to be healing. That's called time and purpose. Watch this time. And then he puts in your mind exactly what he wants you to come for. He don't tell you to come so you can receive a prophetic word. He's not talking about no prophecy. He wants you to come for a He's setting atmospheres. And he speaks the atmosphere before the atmosphere ever takes place. Y'all don't hear me. He starts talking it before it ever, the date ever occurs. He says, people go get healed when I show up. People go get healed on this day. It's going to be two days. And in those two days, you think God can't heal on no other day? You go running in to, for those two days because he got the atmosphere. And then they get in there and the atmosphere starts building. Right. And he gets you on one accord. I'm going to show you something in a minute. He got you in the place. He used three principles. Time, mind, and place. Sam, time, time and place. Watch this. And when the day of Pentecost yes. had fully come, yes. time. They were all on one accord, mind, yes. and in one place. place. See, because when God says he's going to do something, he'll send you. When God says manifestation of the thing is happening, he'll tell you to go to a place. He's not coming to where you are. It's going to show up at the place where he tells you to be. Did y'all hear me? So now watch these next two words. Let me say, repeat the verse. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one, I mean, on one accord and in one place. Next verse. And suddenly, that's how I'm going to close this today, okay? The bottom line is, once we get on one accord and in the same place, our next movement is suddenlies. We start moving in suddenlies. Suddenly, and suddenly, and suddenly, and suddenly. Y'all not quite catching this. Because if you were, you would understand that God has postured you for sudden activity in your life where things are going to happen so quickly. And the scripture says, and suddenly there came. And one day God stopped me. He says, I say, what are you saying? Because he said, only read the first four words. And suddenly there came. He says, he says, uh, it, suddenly what is coming is what you've been there waiting for. What you've been there waiting for? Suddenly. And suddenly there came. Now watch this. A sound as of a rushing mighty wind. It wasn't a rushing mighty wind. 
But it came, no, it came like a wind. What does a wind do? It comes and you don't know from which direction it's coming from. So it just comes, it just comes, it just comes, and you don't know how it's coming, it just shows up. See, God, he told me this. He said, I'm, 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 I'm releasing stuff in ways that people didn't anticipate the release. You looking over here for it, and it's showing up overtaking you from behind. You looking over here for it, and it shows up over here. He says, so posture yourself so that when it comes, even though you don't know where it's coming from, it's coming. And it's coming suddenly. Everybody say suddenly. Watch this. Came as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled it says all the house where they were it filled all the house where they were now it was 120 of them up in the upper room right they all get filled each one of them is a house now they all are housing the holy ghost Are y'all catching this? But the point I want to make with 120, according to my studies, 500 were invited. 380 reneged. The majority went without. Those that were invited didn't get it. Now follow me. The next dimension from the upper room is when they came out of the upper room and went among the people. That's when the people heard them speaking in their own language. So the small space called the upper room was phase one. And because they understood time, mind, and place, when they went out among the people, God expanded their reach. And they grew from 120 to 3,000 in a day. And the 3,000 was only numbering the men. Am I making sense? Throw your hands up. And just begin to declare, I'm in next dimensional living. Come on, de declare it over your family, over your life, over all those areas, over your church. Yes, over every area of your life. Um, your thinking is changing and shifting. No more the same old, same old. You might have to share 380 people to be there where you got to be. Don't mind. Share them. Share it. Share all the issues right here. Come on, share it. Let it offer you. Every word that is anti the Christ in you. Every word that is against the fullness of your destiny, uh, the full manifestation of your destiny, begin to share it. Begin to share it old stuff, the past, the past that once dictated to you your present, let it go. Tell it, stay down there. I am up in the upper room because I'm in a place of next dimensional shifting. I am in a new place. I will not be dictated to. I must fulfill what God has for me, who I am. I will not go another minute not being the full manifestation of the dream of God for my life. I declare over you now victory. I declare over you now victory. Not tomorrow victory, this present moment. I declare over you a new way of thinking so that you can have new way patterns. I declare over you now victory. Not coming victory, now victory.
I declare the fullness of God's grace over you, in you and through you, in the name of Jesus. You cannot be defeated. You cannot be defeated. I said you cannot be defeated. illegal for you to be defeated. It's illegal for you to be defeated. The law of God works in your favor. In the name of Jesus. Right here, seriously, as long as you can, keep your hands up. And posture yourself as long as you can. I know it's, it's not, you, you put them down and put them back up or whatever. But in just, I want you to get this. I want you right here. I want you to lock yourself into the spirit of God right now. And see where you're out of place. And then willingly shift in place. Begin to shift into place. Even in this moment of silence. Place straight. here just shift make smooth transition Father, I thank you for your hand that shifts every one of us. I thank you for recovery.
total recovery. Thank you for the manifestation of your goodness, your godness, through us, your people. Thank you, Lord. Why you got your hands up? Why you pray, why you're there? And like I said, if you need to put them down, you can't. No condemnation at all. But. If you know that you've been out of place, you've just been out of place, there's there's no condemnation zone right now. And you know that there's some some shifting that needs to take place in you. I I just want you to come into agreement with God today. Those of you bold enough, I just want you to step out of your seat and just come to the altar. And the point of the altar is not to show yourself or not even to pat me on the back but it's just a matter of burning up the things the altar is for burning up things that's what the altar is for to put dead stuff on the altar drain it of its life its blood and offer it as a sacrifice here God take this for you two things can't occupy the same space at the same time so if you have ownership of something that's holding you up then the new thing can't get in there. That's all. So right now, there's no condemnation zone. You won't be held hostage. Your position won't be taken. Not unless God says shift it from leadership and you will know that it's the will of God. But whoever you are, whatever you need, come just move, step in and decide, I'm getting in place. If that's you, I encourage you to come to this altar. Just take it for a second. Yeah, come. Come. If that's you, come. Wonderfully bold people. So as you come, you just say, Lord, I, I release it here, and I'm going to leave it here. There's a couple other people. I just sensed that right now. I've sensed there's a couple other people that need to come. You, you've been resisting.